but I think okay. let's see. Oh, we're good. We're good. They're going to let us jump on. Hello, everyone. I have my lovely friend, Carrie, from KW Moms Club. Carrie and I have known each other, oh gosh, way too long, right, Carrie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, have, we have done lots of things together, lots of collaborations. She's my very lovely friend. Introduce KW's Moms Club. Tell us all about what you do, what you offer. You look Absolutely. gorgeous today, by the way. Oh, you too. Oh my goodness. I finally straightened my hair. So I straightened my hair <laughs> very great today. Um, so KW Moms Club, we run, if you think of like mommy and me type classes, that is what we run. So we do baby classes from kind of like zero to walking. And then we also do walking to about entering school age. So about four years old for my toddler group. So we do really fun things like music, art, sensory. Um, we also bring in some guest speakers and some fitness people like Rebecca um, to just like kind of tie everything together and have different variety for all the moms. Yeah, I love it. You guys have such an amazing community and you host an event as well too. Tell me about the Womb to Walking Show. So the Womb to Walking Baby Show is an in-person um, baby and toddler event. So we just had one this past April. It is all finished and it was lovely. It was so much fun. Um, everybody's just so excited to be meeting people in person again because, you know, it's been a long time since we've been able to do these kind of things. So it was just a great place to have tons of different resources for parents it's not just things to buy there's about 50 percent of the people that are there are services and 50 percent are you know retail sales so you can kind of find out you know like maybe a doula yourself like um, a fitness person um stroller fits and stuff like that we have people that um are breastfeeding supports um there's a couple of people you've had on that we had at the show and they're lovely lovely supports but it's just a great way to be able to find all of these resources in one spot because it's hard usually if if you're looking for a doula, you kind of have to walk around, um, you know, it, go into your city and find different doulas. But in one spot, you can see maybe like two or three doulas or two or three potential like a stroller fit or different fitness um, personalities. So it's just a way to be able to see a bunch of things under one roof. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. The energy is so high there. We always have such a great time mm -hmm. and we're going to have another one in September. So if there's anybody that wants to come out and see this in-person event, uh, it is Sunday, September the 25th, 2022. And, um, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, KW Moms Club is the, usually there with a the table telling all about the things that we do. Mm -hmm. And you hosted at Bayman's, which is an amazing venue. It's got lots of parking, super accessible. It's just such a great space. And for those of you that have never been to a baby show, they're like, what the heck? It's like a wedding show, but a baby show. <laughs> so it's like a little bit of everything. And oh my gosh, there were so many bumps at the event um, and so many May babies. I was just like, oh, it was just so great to see everyone out and about. And I know we've all missed a lot of the in-person and, you know, yes. we've, we've been motoring on with all our outdoor sessions, but it was just nice to be able to do something different and have that event. And it was such a great turnout, like oh, right. so much fun. It was so much fun. Honestly, we were meant to be together and kind of like back going back to KW Moms Club, like we're meant to be together, not to be apart. Um, and so this last two years has been really hard on people, right? And especially, I mean, motherhood or, or parenthood in general, starting parenthood can be isolating on its own. And then you add the layer of what's happened in the world in the last two years. And you're really like, holy smokes, this is this is not good for my mental health. And so it's just, you know, even though KW Moms Club does really fun things like art, music, sensory, it really is connecting moms or parents to other moms and parents and just being able to like talk it out and figure out those things. Meet mom friends, just have a good time and be like, are you sleep deprived too? Yes, me, me. Like just feel validated in your feelings and your thoughts and know that you're not the only one going through what you're going through. Like most of the parents are going through the same things. Yeah, absolutely. It takes a village. It really does, you know, and For you know, sure. to have that community connection and be able to have those, you know, conversations and, you know, talking about things that are happening, especially with like-minded individuals and mamas who are, you know, in that same kind of time timeline or same kind of developmental stage that you are like it's just nice to make those connections and they really are lifelong connections like I know so many mamas that have met other friends through the KW Moms Club and they've been friends for years and it's just oh, yes. so good to see that and and hear those stories of, of that community and connection and and yes. having fun with their kids too right it's, 
It's so great. Like, I mean, there is a pl time and a place for different programming. Our programming is mem membership based. So you sign on for like a three, six or 12 month. And um, the amount of friendships we have found through these, like it's, it, it's crazy. Like I thought to myself, I, there's no way I'll be able to find mom friends. Cause I was, I was part of the club before I owned the club. So I was part of it and I found mom friends through it. And then now seeing all the new mamas and new parents come through it and find mom friends as well. I'm just like, Oh, this is what makes my heart like so happy is that every week you kind of see the same people cause they're all members and they're all kind of coming all the time rather than like, you know, there's a, four weeks and six week programs are lovely. Don't get me wrong. It's just that sometimes you lose those connections, but with this, you're going for three months at the minimum. Uh -huh. So then you're meeting those people constantly all the time. And then I kind of see them, they spread apart and then they come together and then they come together and then they're all, you know what I mean? And it's like the two or three or four of them are kind of all friends. And it's so sweet. It just makes like, it's a labor of love for me. I love what I do. And I love connecting those parents to other parents. And it just makes me so happy when I see them friends or they do their side walks or their side, yeah. I'm going to have a play date. Oh, I went out with this, the other mom from the group. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's why I do what I do. Yeah, I for sure. For sure. So let's dive a little bit deeper. Tell me about the different programming that you guys offer and just kind of, you know, give me an overview on, on all of those different things. Cause you've got a good variety of fun things that I always see all the little crafts and stuff popping up yeah. on Instagram. And it's just like, yeah. I want to make those. I know. Right. Okay. So I have some, like some things with me. So I'm going to show you a little bit of fun stuff. So I, love I have that. one that we just kind of did for Easter. So we did, I'm trying to figure out where my camera is here. Uh, okay. This is a little Easter negative spacecraft that we did with our toddlers and our babies. So um, in a toddler sense, the toddler, like we put a chicken on top of here and then the toddlers just paint on their own. Um, for the babies, because we know like acrylic paint, not great for the mouth, babies like teeth, they like to melt stuff. We put it into a Ziploc baggie and then they get to smush on it. So they get still like yeah. fun, but they get to create their own cute little chicken. So we do awesome. art similar to this. I've got another art that I can show you here. So this is not that I want to bring in Halloween because it's just getting <laughs> the springtime, but this is a cute one that we like to do. So we do a lot of foot crafts mm -hmm. So we've got the cute little feet here. And then this is like the boo feet. So we use feet for a lot of our younger baby crafts. Um, but they're just so darn cute, right? Yes, so right. Like, it doesn't matter. Sometimes we'll do toddler footprints as well, just because the moms are like, I don't care how big my toddler's feet are. They're just so stinking cute because yeah. right? <laughs> they're just so cute. So that's one of them. The other thing we focus on is sensory. Um, sensory is so good for babies and toddlers because it gets their like mind going. Um, it gets them language development kind of going like words that you don't normally use when you're doing sensory. Um, sorry, you, you learn when you're doing sensory, like squishy, smelly, that kind of stuff, like things that you don't always use in your everyday. Um, so one of the sensory things we're actually going to do on Friday with my babies, I know this is hard to kind of see, but it's almost like a water type play mat. So we're going to make some water play mats with some fun things inside. We're going to do some maybe sparkles and things like that. This one is an oil and water one with some seeds in it. Um, so we do a lot of fun stuff. Like I said, um, you know, there is fun stuff in with the connection piece that we all need, but um, we do some fun, really, really fun activities. Yeah. Um, and then for my toddlers, we usually do a thing called story and activity. So I'll read a story to the toddlers. And most of the time it's, you know, a fun active type story where they get to do some actions and they have a lot of fun with it. Like point to the sky, tell me what color this is, that kind of thing, um, moving their body. So this one is a Montessori inspired rainbow hand kite. So the parents um, do a lot of work on this one, but it's fun because then the toddler can run around. We play around um, some songs and the toddler can run around and kind of pull the hand kite around with them. And again, Again, this is a Montessori toy, so it's really, there's no wrong way to play with this toy. It's yeah. whatever they want. Some of the toddlers did like hair for themselves. Some of them <laughs> would put it on like their dinosaur. They had like little stuffy friends. They put it on their dinosaur as like a collar. It's so cute. So never a wrong way to play with this toy. And um, it's just a lot of fun and bright colors. It's so fun, right? Yeah. And yeah. my kid doesn't like a ring of ribbons. Totally. Totally. It's so, oh, it's so, so fun. fun. 
fun, so fun. So then we also focus on music as well because you know music is great as well for language development and just like most of the kids really, really love music. So we focus on kind of tapping to the beat, doing really action-based songs like the wheels on the bus, the doors are opening and shutting, that kind of stuff. So they understand those words. Um, and then we'll do some really fun like bubble. We usually, I usually get out my bubble machine and then they can like enjoy the bubbles. It's amazing how many have never seen bubbles in their lives. So the little <laughs> babies, when I see them just like, oh, they're like so shocked by bubbles. And um, I just love it. I think it's so, so adorable to see their- Bubbles are entertaining for all ages. So just- oh, I, I'm even happy. Like when I have the bubble machine going, I had it today because we did music time and they were just so happy. It makes me like, it makes you happy happy to see little babies smiling. Yeah. It's so much fun. Um, <laughs> with the toddlers, we do more action based where we do um, things like sleeping bunnies. So we'll sleep on the ground. And then when it says wake up bunnies, we wake up and we hop that kind of thing. They have a lot of fun with that. And the toddlers, again, get to enjoy the bubbles as well. And we usually do parachute time as well at the end, which they all love as well. It's lots of fun, colorful, you know, you get like kind of the air going and they get to go underneath the parachute. They think it's such a fun time. Um, And then we've kind of stopped our guest speakers because we had a time where we were doing a lot of guest speaker during like lockdown portions. So we've stopped our guest speakers for now, but we were probably in the colder months start our guest speaker series is again and so we usually have people that come on um we've had in the past like um opticians we've had dentists to kind of tell us when is the first time you need to have a checkup for your baby for both of those things because most people don't like at least me as a first-time mom I had no idea when I should do these things um we had like a professional organizer come on we had somebody come and talk about um different like natural holistic things to do when kids get colds and things like that um options for you um, we had people come on that did um, just like mental health in general, because obviously over the last two years, it's been really, really rough and hard on everybody. So, you know, when to seek support, um, what kind of supports are available through the community and also just through, you know, personal people as well. And um, it's just talking and getting your feelings heard and stuff like that. And so our speaker series, like I said, will probably stop um, probably until September or October, but we'll start it again because it is really a very, very important piece, I think. Yeah, for sure. That had that community component. And again, something, you know, similar to this, we're just trying to get the information out there and just to have those conversations and talk more and more about, you know, things and, you know, everything, baby and child and, you know, parent related as well, too, because, you know, the mental health component is is huge. And especially in the last, you know, two years now that we're kind of hopefully coming out of the pandemic and things are, you know, looking up more and more. So hopefully we can, you know, start creating more opportunities for things like that. I agree. Carrie, tell me about you. What's your background? What's your story? How did you come to take over KW Moms Club? You started there as a mama. Yes. And how did, how did it become that you're like, now you are the KW Moms Club. Oh my goodness. Um, it's kind of a long story, but I'll try my best to keep it super short. So um, I my my background is not this. So I actually went to school for business admin. So I, I was in operations management for a really long time. Um, I actually worked at a really large automotive company for 13 years and I did anything between operations and I did finance. I was like the senior financial analyst for like the last like six, five or six years of my life. Um, I was really good at my job, but I was never super invested. And as I had my kids, I realized that, you know, I wanted to be with them more. It was a very hard corporate job where you had to work like tons of hours. And um, I just, sometimes I just wouldn't see my kids at night. So I knew for me in myself that I needed to have some form of a shift. So when I had my third child, I kind of just, I I said to myself, I I don't think I'm going to go back to work. Like, I think I'm done. I think I'm done with this. I just can't do it anymore. Three kids, it's hard. Daycare is expensive. And also I just felt like I needed to kind of have a more flexible career or take some time off. So I didn't really know what I was going to do. The opportunity of, of purchasing KW Moms Club just kind of came up. And sometimes, you know, the right thing at the right time, you're kind of just there and it just happens. And so there was definitely moments of me thinking like, what am I doing? Am I buying a business? I don't know if this is for me. Um, But once I got it, um, I was like, there's no way. Like, I love this. It's so much fun. It's very flexible. Um, And I get to just like 
pour into people's lives and babies and, and mom's lives that I never was able to before. It fills my cup in like such a big way. I just love it so much. And so I haven't looked back now. Now, will I one day go back to a nine to five? I don't know, but right now I'm loving it and I'm having a lot of fun with it. And um, I can't see myself any other way for right now. So yeah, I have a lot of fun. I love it. I'm flexible. I can walk my kids to school every day. I can pick them up from school every day. And um, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. I like it. And you get to hang around cute little muffins all day, every day. Yeah. That's the best part of my job as well, too. And being a scholar fit and <laughs> seeing all the little babes and, you know, just having fun with, with moms and parents and creating those opportunities to have, to allow them to have fun with their children as well, too, right? And create you know, more of a connection between them and, you know, helping them with their growth. And, you know, the sensory things I think is absolutely amazing. I get, I, you know, having an 18 and a four year old and, you know, there's so much more things available now than there was, you know, way back when my now 18 year old was born yes. in comparison to now, right? You know, it's just so great to see, you know, things like this and opportunities to create, you know, that community and again, those connections for sure. Yes. And there's, there's so many ways to make connections like KW Moms Club, obviously, we run like Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and there's other days of the week that is open for other things. So like, I mean, there's tons of different resources available in the community of different things that are similar to myself. Um, and I always say, like, go out and find all those resources. Because if you're anything like me, I am, I used to be a very busy, I wanted to be busy all the time with my kids, like, always doing the things and that's okay if you don't want to be as well but i was really always busy and so there's so many things in the community especially that things are opening up now that you can take advantage of and um i just say like if you want to do that take advantage of it and find your village because there's so many ways to do it so many ways not just kw moms club there's lots mm -hmm. of different yeah, for sure. And that's the nice thing about Kitchener Waterloo region is that there is so many programs and lots of great things, you know, even to go to the library and just, yes. you know, take advantage of those kind of spaces, right? You know, and, and bringing that reading component into your children's life, which is, we all know how important mm -hmm. it is to read to your kids, you know, and helping them with that language and, and uh, development and um, just having that, you know, extra head start for sure. Yeah, absolutely. What would you say is your, who is your biggest inspiration or what is your biggest inspiration? Oh my goodness. It's such a hard thing. Um, like, okay. So I, I don't know what I said last time because I can't remember, but I'm going to tell, I'm going to say my mom because um, my mom, oh my God, I love my mom. I'm going to start crying. So she, she was a single mom when I was about 11. And so she took care of me and my two brothers, my two blood, blood related brothers. Um, and I like I saw her have no career and just be a stay at home mom and then have three kids at home and have to navigate all that being a single mom and also going back to school and getting a great job and just like her perseverance and her like willing to just like put herself out there and do all the things that she needed to do to like get this job and support her her kids. Oh my god, she's, she's such an inspiration to me. I love wow. her. I'm gonna start crying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my mom yeah for sure well and I mean it's created who you are right and created yeah. you to be more of a resilient person and you know the same then you're passing that down to your children as well too yeah I hope they see that I mean sometimes they're like do you're doing mom's club again and I'm like yeah but don't you understand like they I think one day like especially my oldest understands it more she's she's almost 12 and so she understands it more now she's like and I bring her sometimes to different events to like help me with it. And she's like, your babies and moms like love what you do. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And so wow. she gets it. My six-year-old, my four-year-old, they're not quite understanding of that yet. But I feel like as I, you know, progress and they get older, then they'll understand like the meaning of it and like why I'm doing it and why it's important. So yeah. For sure. I know my kids are in the same boat as well, too. They're like, you're teaching again. And it's yeah. just like, yeah, but this is mommy's job and mommy likes what she does. I said, it's either that or mommy goes to work for a nine to five and I don't see you until I come home for supper. And, you know, then they're like, oh, OK. I'm like, yeah, like you have to say, like being an entrepreneur is definitely not for everybody. But, you know, for those of us that, you know, love it and, and find that passion and find that drive for it, it's just an amazing career. And it's never work. You know, it's, it's never work for us. No. And I hope my kids like um, realize that they don't have to do 
what everybody else is doing too, right? To just kind of instill in them that you can kind of do it your own way. You don't have to necessarily like go to school and do all the things. Like going to school is great, don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying like there's other ways to do things. And if you really feel in the heart of your hearts that you need to kind of do your own thing and be your own boss and, and you know, figure out your own way, then there's tons of people in this world that are doing that and you can do it too. So yeah, for sure. And I think that's one thing that the pandemic has definitely taught us as well too, is that, you know, that pivoting, you know, either you've lost your job or realized that that job maybe wasn't where you wanted to be anymore. And, you know, it allowed us to have that opportunity to create those changes. And I think there's, there's been a lot of amazing businesses that have started up because of yes. this pandemic and you know mm -hmm. i know i've seen a lot of them <laughs> and you know recent years and and parent support um services has been one of the biggest ones you know because the mental health component yes. and you know just everything is is definitely really prevalent right now and, and very much needed so being able to you know provide those services and pivot you know from maybe what you used to do and and being able to offer that i think is super important absolutely i mean like it's been a rough hard two years for everybody. Um, but I feel like there's things you can take from it and learn from it and kind of like figure out your business and fix or not necessarily fix, but like use those things going forward. Um, for example, I was never running outside in the summertime, but I had to yeah, because my business, you know, it just, it, I couldn't be inside because there was, you were only allowed in the beginning, like 10 people indoors or five. It was a crazy amount. So in order to, Kind of like keep running my business i was like well in the spring and summer why am i not outside so then we started going outside and everybody's like you need to continue going outside and i was like oh you know what why not yeah. because i mean the fresh air and everything for the kids and for you is, is great and why not take advantage of being outdoors there's so many more things we can do outdoors rather than indoors to be honest so i mean that's one thing that i'm not going to change so from like spring, pretty much like the beginning of May for me until like September, October, very similar to yourself. We're going to be outdoors and it's lovely because there's so many things to do outdoors. Um, you know, it's relatively safer outdoors, you know, if like, you know, if things going, going these days is a little bit dicey, but you know, we can be outdoors, we can be together, we can still be distance, but we can still have fun and we can still be together and in larger groups outside. So mm -hmm. it just mm -hmm. makes me, yeah. Super, super happy. Sunshine is coming in. Everybody's feeling like nice and energized and let's just keep this nice weather going. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, I know. I've been soaking up all of the skylight sunshine today, but I think that outdoor component like as well too, it, it grounds us and we don't even realize how much of a grounding component that we need for that outdoor activity until you do it on a regular basis. And then mm -hmm. if you don't have it, then it's just like, oh, I need to go outside. Like I need to ground. I need to find, you know, myself and find a piece of grass and just hang out and, you know, oh. just soak in all of, you know, that because yeah and kw has such beautiful parks and green spaces and you know such great areas to be able to take advantage of yeah yeah so um just to kind of like touch on the outdoors so our locations we have like a park that we use in kitchener for our tuesday wednesday classes and then on friday we're going to go i have many many members in cambridge so i've listened to them and i have moved my Friday classes when we go outdoors on May 1st, it'll actually be like the seventh or something like that by the time we get to Friday. But um, that's gonna be in one of the Cambridge parks. So I'm going to kind of move myself around to be available for all of my members because I know I have people that are coming in from like different regions and locations. So I have some people even from Guelph that come mm -hmm. um, because I don't know how many resources are available in Guelph, but I have some Guelph parents that come in. Um, and then I have some people from like Brantford, Cambridge. I have people from like Elmira and Listowel. I have people, <laughs> it's interesting how all these people find out about KW Moms Club, but they're, they're like, I don't have programming where I am, so I'm going to come to you. And so yeah. that's why I kind of am spreading myself out a little bit more. And maybe maybe I will even more later on. But right now it's Kitchener kind of based and then like Cambridge based for my yeah. Cambridge people. Yeah, for sure. And we found the same as well, too. So we added Cambridge this year as well, too, because we did have, and especially through your mamas, you know, like, you need to come to Cambridge. So there was definitely a big group in Cambridge that uh, made us shift in that direction. Shout out to all the Cambridge people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. 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 Yeah. 
<laughs> is there any um, podcast, book, audiobook, anything that you're obsessed with or that you love that you want to share? Oh, recently? Um, You've been so busy. She I mean, the Papaya I, podcast. I really like so. um, the Birds of Papaya. So she has the Papaya podcast. So every once in a while when I'm just kind of like doing dishes, I'll listen to her. I think she's really super cute. Oh, so I listen to her. And she's so body positive. She's she's local. Um, I very much like her feed and I very much like her, her podcast as well. So anything that's like that, very like positive, but also just realist. Like we're all going through these things. Like she talks about mental health a lot. She talks about, you know, like working through body image issues and things like that. And um, and she just had a, a baby. I forget, maybe her baby's like one now, but you know what I mean? She's very relatable for a lot of people that um, I work with. So I, I like her a lot. I think she's really good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. She's hilarious. Um, And just real, like yes. hard, raw, real. Yes. And the fact that she's a local Guelph babe, yeah. you know, that just makes it, you know, that much cooler as well, too, that she's, you know, a local mama who's like sharing. And, you know, she's been on everything and everywhere. Like, you know, you see her popping up all over the place. So, yeah, absolutely. Is there anything else that you wanted to throw in today? Anything else you wanted to share? I think we touched on quite a few things. We did. Um, no. I know you have an event coming up in Cambridge. That oh, you yes. Are. I can talk about that. So I do, um, other than the Women to Walk and Baby show, I do some local kind of like markets um, as well because it kind of feeds into the event planning piece that I do. So um, on Sunday, May the 1st, we have, it's called Mama Loves Local and it is at Storehouse 408. I don't know the address, but you can look it up. It's a beautiful venue. It used to be an old beer store and they turned it mm. into this beautiful like wedding um, event space venue. Um, and there's going to be like lots of local artisans, um, lots of different gifts for, for yourself, for mom, for kind of everybody in your life, but more geared towards the women aspect of it. Um, but we also have a photographer coming in to do mommy and me sessions. So if you want to get like, I know, if you want to get two high resolution images, um, I think it's 25 bucks. It's like a steal of a deal. And she's a fabulous, fabulous photographer. Um, we've been working with her through KW Moms Club for um, almost like about six to eight months, but she's lovely and she takes amazing photos. So if you want to get some cute little mommy and me photos for, you know, for your mother's day, um, $25 is a steal of a deal for yeah. her. She's amazing. Um, and then we'll have some fun things like we've got play a latte coming to bring coffee for all the parents. Um, cause you know, I don't know if you like me, but I love my coffee. <laughs> um, so and yeah, donuts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they're going to be bringing like some other treats as well. I'm not quite sure because they sometimes they just do seasonal stuff. Yeah. So it might be cookies at the baby show. There was like those cookies with the Easter eggs in them. And they went like so fast because <laughs> all the all the mamas that were there are like, oh, my gosh, there's cookies. It was so cute. They were so good. And I ate a bunch of donuts there, too. Which I <laughs> yeah. Delicious. I made too many donuts. Yeah, yeah. They were so delicious. <laughs> um, yeah. So other than that, you just come um, hang out, buy some gifts, check out the photographer, check out Play Latte. We'll have some tables inside, tables outside. Um, but I also do this with uh, Alex of Little Blue Fern, Little Blue Fern events. And so um, we usually do collaboration a couple times a year so we might do another one at Christmas um, but also just keep a watch out because I have things in the works and I might have some other Cambridge type events coming up soon um, that are market ish and maybe outside so how about I say that and that's right once everything is firmed up I will let everybody else know amazing yeah and your events are so much fun and Carrie puts on a great baby show and all her events are so well organized and her team is absolutely amazing they are super sweet and everybody we just have so much fun and I love the womb to walking show. Can't wait till the next one in the fall. Yes. Um, and I love what you guys do with the KW moms club. I appreciate having you having me in and doing stroller fit with the mamas and all the other community groups and everything. It's so much fun. So much fun. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, it was my pleasure. It's good to have you back again. Hello. And you have to jump on and talk about things again more and maybe do uh, a little podcast feature. And maybe we'll talk about more like sensory stuff and kind of dive into, you know, little things here and there a little bit deeper. But yeah. Yeah, podcast lunch is on Sunday with our first session up. And then we'll be once a week, we'll have new podcast drops. So we'll have Carrie's interview from the last event up. And then we'll slowly work our way to these ones as well, too. Sounds good. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> I can't wait.
Yeah. Thanks so much, girl. It was so good to see your face. Have Thank a great you. Friday. You too. Bye.